we want to let you give your introduction. I know a lot of people, you know, introduce other or the guest speaker, but uh, obviously you know yourself the best. So just wanted to see if you can give us, you know, your age, where you're from, and then, you know, any projects you're working on the DL. Okay. Hi guys. If you guys have never seen me before, my name is Caitlin Nolan. I'm 24. I live in California, but I'm from Arizona. Just like that's how Diego and I know each other. And I do social media full time, but I'm also a personal trainer. And I just recently actually launched my first guide. So that's kind of where my passion project is. And then career wise, it's all social media. So I do TikTok, Instagram podcasts. And this is kind of new for me. I've only been in the world of social media for about three and a half years. So not that new, but it's super fun and I'm still learning, but I'm happy to share everything I've learned so far. And I have a dog. I live with my fiance now and it's pretty much the rundown. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much. And yeah, I'd like to, uh, you know, hopefully maybe talk a little bit about Hunter or, or even have him on someday. Uh, but, you know, going from that, now that we have your introduction, I uh, kind of wanted to start off with your, you know, early life. I've known you for a while. I think we've known each other since like we were like 14. Yeah. I remember, my earliest memory with you is when we went to go get sushi with like Trevor Patterson, Caden Carter, and like Alyssa Smith. And like we all went to your house and we were really? playing like hide and go seek and we were like 14 or 15. Oh um but that's like my earliest memory oh hunter was there too i was gonna say was um, hunter there? <laughs> yeah no hunter was there too uh i've known hunter forever i know um, like since i mean he, we went to elementary school together actually mm -hmm. so know each other forever but anyways obviously in high school i knew you were a cheerleader mm -hmm. um you know what originally you know got you into fitness and sports i, I remember hearing one of your podcasts your dad was you know an athlete mm -hmm. uh I don't want to say it was an Olympian because I think that's something you were talking about mistaking, yeah. <laughs> um, but just wanted to hear, you know, what originally got you into fitness and, and sports? Yeah. So I grew up just doing sports myself and then my family was super active. So I'm really grateful that that was my upbringing. And then after high school, that's when I started to get into fitness, like lifting on my own. And I'd say that growing up, playing sports is what gave me the passion for fitness. And that's how I knew I wanted to become a personal trainer. So that happened immediately for me after high school. And that's when I kind of discovered YouTube and watching vlogs and learning through that. So it's funny now it's just so full circle. And that's why I feel like so grateful for the job that I do. But that's kind of how it st started just naturally. And then it's just grown into actually learning about it, taking my CPT and stuff like that. Awesome. And then so obviously, you know, fitness is such like a big part of your life. And I know that earlier you were just telling us you guys were lying around today. But, you know, like on average, what would you say like your day to day looks like from when you wake up till you go to bed? I know you're doing as well the the challenge. Yeah, the 75 saw. I have actually pretty similar days every single day. I have a pretty specific routine just because I feel like that's what helps me be more productive being my own boss. I feel like having a routine really helps me. And I also like to have balance and mentally feel good. So usually we wake up, I always make my coffee first thing in the morning because I get excited about it. So I feel like starting the day with something you're actually excited about is good. Mm -hmm. I do that. And then usually I work out first thing in the morning. I really like to just have an endorphin rush, have time to myself. Plus I feel like it gets me out of bed because if I am just getting up to go do work, I feel like that for me is kind of hard. So I'll start the morning off with a workout. So that's a tone for the day. I don't work out every day, but probably about five days a week. And then when I get home, that's when my work day starts. So obviously with a job where you are working for yourself, there's not a start time and end time. You're not clocking in and out. So I've just realized through doing this, that having certain times where I do have my work brain on, it does help me. And it also helps me at night. So I'm not constantly thinking about work at like 10 PM. So I'll start work. And that's all just at the house. Usually I'm on my computer doing emails. If I'm filming, it's things at the house usually. So I'll do that, edit. I have a management team that I work with. So I'll be on emails with them. Sometimes we have calls, mostly texting and just kind of communicating with them all day. And then once my work day's over, it's usually about 5.30 or 6. And then that's when Hunter and I go on a walk with our dog. And it's also the end of his work day. So I feel like that's a good time for us to catch up from our day and also just like spend time with Coco, exercise her, come home, make dinner. And then the rest of the night is pretty much chill, doing nothing. We like, we'll do our self care, like shower, take makeup off all of that. And then we just watch a show like all night. I'm trying to get in the habit of reading, like I was telling you, Diego, yeah. but mm -hmm. 
it's hard to do that. So usually mm-hmm. just like once the work brains off, I'm dead by the end of the day. So we just try to chill. Oh my God. All right, real quick, Lawrence, I know that you're, you're going to ask a question, but the, you probably had the most packed day. I think that of anyone that we've talked to so far, um, really? I feel like when I, when I wake up, yeah. I'll like wake up and then go to work and then I black out at work and then I'm at home <laughs> after. So that's really cool that you, you, you have a lot of stuff. I, I heard like, you know, mixing up your routine is like a way of helping to prevent like other things like dementia and just stuff in your older age. So that's really cool that you, you have your day so packed like that. That's cool. I know. I love it and can't wait to hear more, but definitely want to learn more about what your high school life was like in college and how that experience was for you and your mental health at that point in your life too. Yeah. I lived with my roommates in college and they were my best friends from high school. So I had a really positive experience. I did do a lot of like online classes and I went to an MCC is the name of the school but I went to a CC school so I didn't get the typical college experience like Mm -hmm. some of my friends were in sororities or they played sports and I decided not well I didn't cheer or anything like that after high school so I honestly just went straight into working I worked at Orange Theory and it was fun but I definitely felt like I kind of missed out on like the college experience so a lot of time I was feeling like FOMO from social media and all of that And that kind of stopped once I found my own passions and I realized that what was in front of me was enough. And I was doing what was actually working for my lifestyle. Like sometimes we go on social media and we get jealous or the FOMO feeling for things, but we don't even think for a second if that would actually be right for our life and if we would actually Mm -hmm. enjoy what we are watching. So I feel like once I had that realization, I was just kind of happy with what was in front of me. And I just started working on work myself all my friends I still had Hunter at that point he was still in my life and yeah so it was really good and I feel like a lot of the friends and people that were in my life then are still in my life now so not a lot has changed I just think like career-wise it's changed love that and how did you make that decision to that you know school wasn't for you and you wanted to pursue social media and being an influencer full-time I made the choice to stop going to college and just unenroll in all of my classes when I did start this as a job so at that point it was a career for me so that was what really made the deciding factor for me but I think I would have chosen that anyway because like I said fitness has always been my passion so I always knew that that's the job that I wanted I feel like maybe I was scared at first just because all my friends were going to college And I wanted to try it out. And I think there's nothing wrong with trying out and maybe quote unquote, wasting your time. It's never actual waste. I learned a lot through going to school and obviously taking classes, but I definitely knew that fitness was my passion and it wasn't going to give me that through taking college classes. I wanted to get my CPT and it took a while to get it, but it's funny how it's now the job that I do. Yeah. For real full circle. And I see your workout videos and your new workout package or Mm -hmm. I don't know the right word at the moment, yeah. but that's so sick. And it's so exciting to see too. Thank you. Thank you. So, so what much. were some of the realizations you had post high school when you knew that, you know, fitness was for you and you wanted to pursue it? And did you have any internships or experiences that helped you get there? I did take an internship that wasn't related to fitness at all. I feel like I learned going out of high school that working is the best thing that you can do. Making sure that you're doing jobs that either you care about or you're passionate about. I worked at Orange Theory and it just taught me lessons that I still use today, like time management. Also, I think a lot of the productivity that I've learned has come from that just because obviously the more you work hard and the more you show up for yourself and for your job, you're going to make more money or you're going to be more successful and that sort of thing. So I think it just taught me that you're in control of how successful you are and just how productive you're going to be. You know, something that like I really like admire is that like you you did talk about like getting the FOMO and and things mm-hmm. like that. And I also went to community college. I went to CGC um, and I also took classes when I was at ACC at MCC. So I went to both CCs and I remember like seeing everyone's like stories on like Snapchat and like Instagram and like all these like fraternity parties and and I was just like, oh, my God, like that's what I should be doing right now. Mm-hmm. And, you know, just like thinking you know, that's like what college was for. And so like, I I try to work so hard so I can go to college so I can party. And that was just like the absolute worst mindset that I could have ever had, because that's literally all I did when I went to college. And I just thought like, that's what you're supposed to do. And I never really even thought about like life after college. Like I never, you know, did an internship or, or anything like that. And 
I remember listening to one of your podcasts and you talked about how 2019 was like a transformative year for you when you started to like shift your mindset. And I think for me, where I finally got out of that, you know, I want to be like these other kids that look super cool, like, you know, mm -hmm. at these parties and like my image on social media. Once I turned like 21 and like not a lot of people show up to my birthday, I just was suffering from the worst hangover ever. I wasn't doing good in school. Like I didn't have a career going. And so like ultimately like that was like the year for me that made me was like, what am I doing? Like I want to do way more than this. I need to stop. Yeah. Like what what was like the thing for you? Because for me, like I said, it was my birthday. Like was there something that happened to you? Like what what made you want to just be like, I'm done with this? I do remember moving out of my roommate house and back in with my parents at one point, like Hunter and I were wanting to move in together. So I feel like being removed from that kind of party phase did make me mm -hmm. step back and think, is this what's working for me? And I'm not trying to knock anyone who obviously loves going out. Like that's so much fun and yeah. we all still do it. And we all still have fun. And I think it's just a lot about learning yourself and knowing what is balance because you can obviously be super productive and then not focus on your social life, or you can do the opposite and be fully focused on your social life and let maybe your mental health or your physical health go down. So I feel like after I moved out of my roommate house and just spent a lot more time alone and like more focused on work, I had more time to myself. And this is when I started like journaling and just trying to figure out what I wanted to do with my life. I was watching YouTube and that's when I got inspired to kind of deep dive into like a wellness journey rather than just focus on fitness. And that's also where I started realizing that balance was really important and having all aspects of your life met. So that's when I'd say it was the biggest difference was right when I moved away from all of it. That's good. Yeah. I think definitely the isolation is, is something people should go through if they really want to maybe find themselves or see what they want to do. Yeah. I feel like we have like the same life you guys because 2019 is when mm -hmm. I moved back home too even though I live super close to my college I was like okay I need to stop partying going out every single day just because I'm bored mm -hmm. and getting on track so it's cool to see the parallels we all have yeah that is dude fun. yeah it was always like it was like a Saturday <laughs> came up and it was like all right where are we drinking this Saturday and it's just like you don't have like you don't have to go out every week and like now like I maybe go out once a month but I mean, I don't know. That's it's just like, I don't know. I, I Again, it's not there's nothing wrong with that because there's a lot of kids that are young that do that. Yeah. Um, But ultimately, it's not something I, I would recommend consistently doing forever. But yeah. And like, again, like there's just people that can function on a high level, like hungover or like just whatever. Like, it's absolutely insane. Like kids in my fraternity just being able to get straight mm -hmm. A's like or in the Barrett Honors College partying four days a week. Like, yeah it's just not for everyone not everyone can do that and people should yep. just accept that that's why i always say like learn yourself learn how you like to learn what are you passionate about does mm -hmm. alcohol work with you like for me i stopped drinking alcohol a couple of years ago and that wasn't even right when i decided to do it to do a wellness journey or anything like that it just randomly one weekend i was like i don't feel good hungover like it's really affecting me it's yeah. affecting my anxiety mm -hmm. And my productivity, all these things. So I know it's not going to work for me, but obviously the person right next to me might have a totally different experience. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And uh, this is like, I, I think I had my first like realization where I wanted to like maybe go sober. And I took like this, it was like my last elective for me to graduate. So I was going to take like, you know, just some bullshit class. <laughs> and it was for like an alcoholic anonymous class where it was just like the study of the mind of alcoholics and it like really opened up like my realization that like an alcoholic isn't someone that you know necessarily has to be like drinking every day but it could also be somebody that when they do drink they you know can't really control themselves like they want to have you know not just one they want to have 10 or you know they they tend to black out every time they drink maybe they only go out once a week but when they do they black out and do stuff they don't want to do and that was like what sounded like me you know i felt like i was really getting my life on track i got a good job at Oracle, was going to move to California like you and Hunter. But I knew that when I do drink, I, I like to have like a ton of drinks, which is just not good. And it made me realize like it's something I definitely need to try and figure out or or maybe find a different solution. So anyway, feel that we'll move on to <laughs> move on something different now from alcoholism. This is my favorite part, actually, which is going to be your career. I love diving into everyone's career. So I wanted to see like what the feeling was like or the experience like was it like a kind of like high or you know were you excited nervous when you started to see your like followers go up the engagement 
and things started to really roll because, you know, when something like you, you've also said this, when, you know, you start doing something new or you're seeing results, like you start to get really excited and, and, and things like that. So I just want to know overall, like, what were you thinking? Like, were you scared, excited? I was definitely really excited. I started on TikTok. So I feel like that type of growth was just different and it was during quarantine so it was kind of like where a video would go viral and things like that so it was definitely really exciting and I mentioned earlier in the episode that when you work hard and you're self-sufficient then it makes you more successful or more money and I just wanted to say that when I first started I did not have money in mind at all like I did Mm -hmm. not think that it was going to be a career but what did excite me so much and maybe just because I was talking about social or um fitness so much on social media I was just so excited to like get my message out there because at the time I just felt like I it was lacking on social media and that's why I started so I some background when I first started posting on TikTok it was all about wellness and balance and just having a more holistic and positive approach to wellness and fitness and having positive self-talk and pretty much just sharing my experience and how I felt like I did 180 with my lifestyle. And I started to be kinder to myself and work on my confidence and not just think of fitness as changing myself or things that I felt were negative about myself. So I was just excited to get my content out there really. So it was really exciting. No, for sure. And I, I think ultimately that's what makes a lot of people successful is it- they're genuinely passionate about it. They don't have the money factor in mind and it makes them seem more genuine. Mm-hmm. Um, Basam talks about this all the time when you're creating like a project or an application, like you're really building something for the user. Focus on the user. You're giving them something valuable. Don't think about, you know, exactly how much money you're going to be making. Like that can come later down the line, like figure out building value for the user. So yeah, I love that you said that. So this is something that me and Lauren, I maybe still struggle with. But were you like ever afraid of, you know, being judged by your peers and, and how did you get over that? Honestly, no. And I kind of wish I, <laughs> I kind of wish I was because I will see TikToks of me from a couple of years ago. And I'm like, someone, someone should have told me not to do that because. No way. That was your foundation that built you up though. Yeah. Like, you know, yeah, we yeah, no, I don't. Okay. You're right. I, I, I was thinking right. of all the old trends and it was like the like this trend I forgot that yes. is and then like just all the other dances and I was just like thinking about that era um, but anyway yeah, yeah sorry keep going so no I I mean there was always that fear of like people from high school being mean or like sending mm-hmm. something in a group chat but then I would think yeah. about it for more than five seconds and be like do I care about those people like if those people yeah. are gonna be mean and like send something be like oh my gosh like look at her that's so embarrassing yeah I don't care about them I don't care if I'm gonna be successful or not it's not about that. I know a lot of people online will be like, well, just do it, do it. And then once you're successful, they'll be mad that they made fun of you. It shouldn't matter about that, in my opinion. Like, yeah, you don't care about yeah. their opinion, whatever they think that's on them. So that's what I was always trying to focus on. I still do that today. Yeah. Me, me and that. Lauren always And they're just about, adding um, to your engagement too. Sorry, Diego. <laughs> exactly. True, 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 true. That's true. But me and Lauren always talk about a uh, cringe mountain where it's, it, it's basically exactly like you said, like when you're you're going up at first and like people are like making fun of you or whatever, but you have to like go through that to then hit the peak and then you're yeah. in the land of, of cool now and everyone's mm-hmm. like, oh my God, they're so sick. And like, yeah. you're doing the same stuff. You just have more followers and likes. And it's just like, it's just so funny, like seeing people switch from it being like not cool to being cool. Well, so, also I feel like too, like if anybody listening is starting a podcast or something where it does feel really cringe, put yourself out there a business. Yeah. Don't even think about it as you have to be successful to make money from it or have followers or things like that, because just being consistent with something I think is cool. Like just, if you like talk to someone, they're like, oh yeah, I've been like, doing this forever. I'm like super consistent with it. This is my passion. It's, it's like, yeah. oh, that's really cool. Like you don't think of it as them just trying to like you know, I don't know, whatever. No, yeah. I feel like it's cringe. No, yeah, no, I totally agree. And, and that's another conversation I was having with, with Drew because he was talking about his YouTube channel and like being afraid of like people finding it and mm-hmm. all these other things. And I was just like, dude, like who cares? Like yeah. there, there's it's hard, but no, yeah, no, it is. But I, I think, I think when I was, when I was telling him that I, I'm talking to myself, yeah. Um, mm-hmm. you know, and it's like one of those things where you're trying to get motivated. I'm just like, I need to probably take my own advice. That's like um, all my podcast episodes. I always say, like, if I talk about something, it's usually because I'm struggling with it. I'm like, I'll do 
an entire episode about, oh, how to be productive in the morning. And then I'm like, just to preface this, like I'm not productive in the morning. That's why I'm making this yeah. episode. I need to pep talk myself. <laughs> That's so, uh, my manager called me out the other day because we were having like a one-on-one and I was talking about like, you know, I need to have my friends and my significant other be optimistic and they, mm-hmm. you know, have to always think positively. Like, you know, there's people out there that will, um, you know, look in the downside of everything. They got to look for the up. And she's like, are you talking about yourself right now? Like, are you, you know, look at, is this about you? And then I like laughed and I was like, maybe you're right. Like, yeah, I do. I guess maybe I do do that sometimes. But <laughs> so another thing too, is I, I do see your community is like super positive and welcoming, just like you. Do you, do you get any haters right now or any negative comments? And like, how do you deal with them? Do you just like block them, not pay attention to them? I do get like a few random hate comments and I feel like they are random just because from the beginning, like I've only been trying to share things to help people. So I feel like when you create a positive space, it's like really hard for people to break that down. And so I feel like because I have so many amazing supporters that when someone leaves a hate comment or something, I'm just like, it's them. Like it's their day. It's their insecurity. I try to remind myself, but instantly it's like your heart drops. Like I actually just got one last night and it was just like commenting about my body image. And they're like, you've changed so much in the past two years, like all these things. And I feel like at first you're like, why are they being like, why are they trying to like bring me down, whatever. But then when you think about the actual comment, I'm just like, okay. And like, I feel like if it wouldn't have affected you anyway, if they wouldn't have commented it, like I try not to let it affect me. Like don't let other people draw your insecurities. So, and that's just in life too, not just hate comments, but just like anyone, if they're a hater, they're a hater. And yeah, I just try not to focus on them. Yeah. I feel that. I I feel like also sometimes people just like lack emotional intelligence and maybe they're like genuinely curious, but it just comes off rude. I feel like I've been in conversations like that. I'm like, did they just say that to me? Like, what does that mean? (laughs) Um, but uh, moving forward, talking more about like your growth. So we started this podcast originally because you know, Lauren and I were reaching out on LinkedIn to people that like worked at Microsoft, Google to get career advice and learn how they got to where they, you know, got to. And we thought it'd be a great idea to share that with other people. And it's awesome because we've never like spoken to an influencer about tips and stuff like that now that we're trying to do the same thing. So this is like super cool for us, but want to know, like, how exactly did you, you know, find like tips and tricks, like build momentum, like find a mentor. If you had a mentor, like, you know, how does that even work? I think with social media growth specifically and actually making it into a career, one, I have two tips for anyone. The first one is you have to post stuff. You have to get your content out there to know what one you feel most comfortable filming, what you feel like you are have the most talent at, at and then three, what your audience actually likes, because mm. I'll do three different types of videos and one will do so much better than the other. And then that's just telling me, oh, oh people are more interested about this topic Therefore, I'll probably make more videos off that topic. Mm. So it's like listening to your own audience. So not only the first part, finding out what works for you, but then the second part, learning your audience and learning what they respond to. And it can be really simple. It could be the same topic, but maybe you switch up something in the episode or the YouTube video. Like maybe it's a voiceover video or it's talking to the camera. Like there's so many different ways that you can try it and then listen to the response and try to learn as best you can your audience. So I, w- I was wondering about that. So we found a tool to look at like, you know, topics and stuff like that, that people are engaged with. But do you look on like your YouTube analytics? Like, do you like, where do you see all that like data? So there's or- definitely like on YouTube and podcasts, you can yeah. see what your top videos were. So that is kind of just based off of views. Okay. So I'll look at that. And then also just in general, whatever niche that you have. So for you guys, it's like the business niche being Mm -hmm. productive, that sort of thing. You can just search on YouTube. Like think about also the things that you guys listen to and the things that Mm -hmm. you go and watch, because I feel like that will help give you ideas. So that kind of helps with the first step of posting the content. And then also not only focusing on what's out there that's popular, but on your Mm -hmm. specific channel, what's popular. Cause maybe you're doing something that other people aren't doing. And maybe that's, Mm -hmm. that's like those magic sauce, you know? Yeah. Gotcha. That actually goes perfectly into my next question. So you know, obviously like the algorithms you're constantly changing. They're always trying to like fine tune it. Do you have to like, do you find yourself like constantly trying to change like what you're, you're posting to fit that? Or do you just like stick with what you want to post? I would say for this one, 
forget about the word algorithm because it will always change and you could do everything perfectly right for the algorithm, like have the right amount of words on the screen, whatever, and it's still flop. So I like mm. don't focus on that at all. Some like social media people might hate me for saying that, but don't focus <laughs> on the algorithm. But focus, I'd say at least 20% of your energy on what features are like working on social media. So like when Instagram came out with reels, jumping on that. So being aware of the industry, but not putting too much focus on it. That's why I say 20%, because at the end of the day, good content, creative content, being yourself, authentic, passionate, like that will always override the rest. Because when I first started, I didn't even know what the algorithm was, you know? (laughs) So I think it's kind of like a give and take. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. So, you know, you talked a little bit about your circle as far as your you know friends back home you still have a lot of them and then but obviously you have a bunch of new friends now um Mm -hmm. you know what is what is that like having like a group of like influencer friends because like for me it's funny when i when people see that you like follow me they're like how the hell do you know caitlin i'm like what like what do you mean like that's my friend from high school and they're like i watch your videos all the time and blah 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 and like you know, still to me, like you're, you're my friend, Caitlin, your Hunter's girlfriend. Well now fiance, but <laughs> like, what is that like for you? Like, is it like, oh my gosh, like they're my friend or like, or do you just see them as like a regular person? Like, what is that like? That's funny that you say that just cause we have been friends for so long. So I was just even thinking like, I feel more nervous now recording because you're like my personal good friend than like <laughs> I have on other podcasts, which is funny, <laughs> but I would say having friends in this industry has been really cool. I've met mm. A lot of people who I like followed before and like watched. So I felt like they were already friends to me. And then mm. getting to know them on a personal level is just even more cool. And I feel like it's just like any other coworker. It's nice to relate to someone. And I do think because social media is so tied to your real life. And for me personally, like I'm just posting what I do, you know, like when I work yeah. out, make sure I'll post it. So it's so close to my real life. And same with a lot of my friends that I feel like our experiences with it are really like deep and it's just nice to relate to someone on a work level too that's so cool is there anything like you realize by like making friends with other influencers like anything that you're like oh you know this is how this is done or something like that I will say maybe this is just my experience like all the friends in my life who I've met through social media have been so motivated and like Mm. self-disciplined and creative people so it's really inspiring not to say that at people who don't do social media aren't but just specifically when I look at the friends in my life who do social media it's just they're all so inspiring every time I hang out with them I like come home and I'm like oh I want to like go film I want to like go work hard or do something so it's yeah. cool to be surrounded by people who really motivate you yeah I, I think that's something that really drew me to Lauren is she was always just doing Same. all these different things and she was just getting mm-hmm. so fired I'm like I want to do that too you know let's do this <laughs> let's do that so we I just nerd out together. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> literally. So, oh, wanted so wanted to now get into your your CPT. Like what ultimately, you know, made you want to to go out after that? Is it also because of your friends or has it been something you want to do for a while? I think that one was just something I had like promised myself for a long time at legit ever since drop not even dropping out of college but when I first started college I was like I want to get my CPT eventually so I have yeah. repurchased the CPT like way too many times to admit <laughs> and I'm just not a school person at all yeah. another reason I dropped out I like I had a whole year where I was literally on academic probation like I was oh my God, me too. classes it was bad <laughs> and I feel like I was so discouraged like I remember feeling really really anxious about that and just being like Mm -hmm. I'm going nowhere in life like if it's not school it's nothing so I still kind of had that pattern after college and I wasn't getting the CBT and I would study a little bit and then not but like a year ago I was just like okay I I know this information I need to just study and take this test and then that's how it kind of came about so just like personally motivating myself. See, because like I know that you are very smart, and obviously you work super hard. And I was having this like conversation with my mom, um, because like now I'm like way more motivated, and like I I do research on things that I want to do. And ultimately, like I don't think like you know either of us are bad at school, or you know we're less intelligent than the other person. We just like you know aren't passionate about it. Like unfortunately, I don't give I don't care about math. Like I don't care about anything else that's (laughs) like that. And ultimately, I just don't put myself into it. And I would I just like never studied through college. Like 
and then ultimately i was like okay like i have to you know get my degree and, and do something else i do feel like it's a personality type to have so much passion about certain things but when you don't have passion yeah. about it it's like i will not do it like i can't do it yep. if i don't have any type of like motivation for it exactly so speaking of you know being motivated uh are you motivated to you know get some more certifications do you want to do i know you you do soul cycle a lot do you want to become a spin instructor, like do yoga, anything like that, Pilates maybe? I've thought about it, but I don't think so. One, because it took me so long to actually get the CBT, but two. <laughs> yeah. I, Being a like, yoga instructor is expensive too, I think. Yeah, I think so. so. Yeah, you need like um, 3,000 I mean, hours, I think. Something really? crazy. Oh yeah, oh I looked into it for a little bit. <laughs> oh, I'll go to your yoga class. But <laughs> I, yeah, no, I don't, I don't think so because I also like to have activities and things and passions that have nothing to do with work. So I feel like uh, if I turn like my one passion, that yes. I like about, it would, it'd be too much. Good idea. Good idea. Our, our, one of our guests, David, which is a great buddy of mine now, he uh, started streaming and stuff like that. Uh, like, cause he loved playing video games. And then he was like, I started to absolutely dread playing video games because it was like a constant thing I had to keep doing. And like, yeah. it was supposed to be my relaxing thing so ultimately he just like cold turkey and stopped and i was just like wow like okay but <laughs> anyways as well wanted to say yeah like these certifications are like no joke they're not like something you can just go get uh, which is what i thought like you also you know have to study a lot and then spend a lot of money and me lauren and Brittany have all always talked about getting our cpt and none of us have have started yet so we're calling ourselves out right now i guess but, yeah we said um, january so yeah. public announcement i remember we will do it <laughs> Yeah, no, you guys can ask me. We can do a study group. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, you, you need to be our teacher yeah. if you do tutoring <laughs> sessions. Wanted to ask a funny one-off question as well. I don't know like how much you do it or like look into it, but obviously Hunter's your fiance. I know he's a software engineer. You know, have you seen any new technology that might affect your like social media work? I know that something that's like kind of trending right now is like AI influencers where they have like full on like moving people or you know, they can uh, write a, a dialogue for them and have them speak it. And there's like guys that like purely manage them and have them like stream, like, you know, ultimately like, you know, someone can make a girl influencer if they want to or anything like that. Have you thought about that or is there anything affecting you? I hate saying this on a um, business podcast, but literally no. And I think that is yeah. why Hunter and I are so great together because we're so opposite. Like I am so... <laughs> far from like technology and books and reading all this stuff like I'm like so creative brain so it's like like I don't really even understand technology that well so yeah. no no technology I'm trying to think if there's like any cool product I've seen but I'm like the Stanley I'm just kidding <laughs> I don't, I don't <laughs> do you see that though. TikTok of the Stanley cup like in the car that got on fire and like it's yes. oh my gosh I, I got a Stanley Cup for Christmas because I was like telling my parents, I was like, oh my, like, look at this TikTok. Like this girl's car got caught on fire and the Stanley Cup survived and there's mm -hmm. still ice in it. So I was like, I'm going to get a Stanley Cup now. Yeah, so something. that to me is revolutionary. So we'll <laughs> valid. Right. I'll let it, I'll let, uh, we want to start to now dive into more of your mental health and confidence, but I'll let Lauren uh, take that one over. Yes. So loved your episode about your anxiety journey. Is there anything that, you suffer from additionally like negative self-talk in addition to anxiety and like imposter syndrome? I definitely think like the two biggest struggles mentally for me are anxiety and negative self-talk, but I've worked a lot on them. So at this point now, I feel like I'm at a really good place, maybe not with anxiety because I feel like anxiety is something that will probably always be in my life because I've always had anxiety, but, but I've learned a lot how to control it and like going to therapy and doing things that really help me but definitely negative self-talk. Mm. I know it's so hard to get over that too. I feel like, especially when you're a high achiever and you just keep on wanting to improve yourself. It's like, okay, you can do other things to help yourself besides being mean to yourself too. Yeah. Mm. I feel like we all focus on like the physical things that we can actually do to help ourselves, but we always forget that like our internal dialogue and how much we're mm. scrolling, like these things actually also really affect oh us God. too. Yeah. Dude, I literally had a conversation with Lauren too. Like I, I need a, like a social media cleanse because I don't know what's been wrong with me lately, but I literally can't stop scrolling sometimes. It's like been the worst it's, it's ever mm -hmm. been. It's hard. Um, But yeah, it's been bad. It's so hard not to like, to break that habit because it's so easy and you do it all day. Yeah. 
honestly getting a Kindle has helped me because like I still get that satisfaction of like holding something, but yeah. I'm reading. So that's what I was thinking is like maybe I could just delete the apps off of my phone and then I could just use them on my computer if I need to like upload something or edit something. But yeah, it must be extra hard for you because it's literally like your job. So yeah, I mean, I'm on so much. I'm honestly the last person to give tips about scrolling because I do and I feel like it's part of my job to like be mm -hmm. in the know. But yeah. it's like definitely like I'll get carried away at night and just like scroll and scroll and scroll. And so it's hard. Yeah, it's hard. I mean, random tangent, but my brother lost his phone back in like April. So he was like, okay, I'm going to go off the grid and get a flip phone. And he did it, but then he ended up using the iPad, bringing it to the gym. So <laughs> it's hard. <laughs> that is so sure, funny. Sure, iPad with a full gym. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> now he has an iPhone again. So, <laughs> but I know sometimes I, when yeah. we do things too extreme, it's like it's not going to work. <laughs> yeah. That's so funny. But how would you get comfortable filming in public and doing influencer things? I know you talked a little bit about mm. before about you know not caring what people think, but what was it like for you? Yeah. I still like get nervous, especially like at a gym, because I feel like what I do for work, sometimes the fear of people who are maybe more knowledgeable, more knowledgeable than me, like looking at me as, oh, why is she trying to give these tips that are wrong or whatever? Mm. And I feel like that's the negative self-talk. So I feel like just reminding yourself and it doesn't have to be this scenario, but for me, it's like, you are a CPT. You've been doing social media for a while. Like you have two feet to stand on. So stand on them and not worry about the rest because also fake it till you make it like just vlog in public nobody knows who you're sending that to no one knows like you could be the biggest youtuber you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's such like a valid fear i feel like i've seen like clips of people making fun of other people doing like you know maybe an exercise they haven't seen before and then like you'll go through the comments or, or some other influencer will stitch in and be like actually they're doing something that's really helpful and that's right but like people yeah. are just so quick to put other people down it's crazy yeah there's always gonna be someone else's opinion like fitness mm -hmm. there's no right or wrong way there's going to be someone who doesn't agree with what you're doing so it's like you can't please everybody mm -hmm. yeah so why do you guys choose to move to costa mesa and newport instead of la where maybe you know traditionally more influencers have moved when they come to california um we were drawn to orange county because i have family in orange county so we visited all the time so we knew the area really well we knew a family could easily come stay with them and us so that's kind of what drew us here that we have some friends who already live over here so we never really considered la but i feel like it just naturally happened so i always feel like something that is naturally easy coming about like you're like i already know the area like to me, I feel like that's the right option. Sometimes throwing yourself in something crazy to me just is a little too overwhelming. For sure. Yeah. Do you ever miss home too? I know you guys go back often and do your road trips, but what do you miss about Arizona yeah. and what do you not I know miss? That, that kind of sucks. You guys can't fly. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Uh, we go home a lot just because we do miss it. And I feel like yeah. we've learned that we miss Arizona because of the people and our family and we just have such a good community there and it's always going to be different. I feel like when you move, like just your friends you grew up with, like it just does feel different. So mm -hmm. that's what we miss about Arizona, but it's also helped us grow a lot being here and like kind of having to be on our own and make new friends and all of that. So it's a good thing, but it is sad sometimes. Mm -hmm. I'm glad it's only, not only, but four or five hour drive too. So not terrible. I hope. Yeah. I mean, I just go on my phone the whole time. Yeah, so. that's my princess <laughs> for the win. Hundred drives the whole time. That's funny. Yeah, I'm the same. <laughs> what do you that's see good. yourself doing in the future, and where do you think you guys will end up living long term, or in the future too? In the future, I could see us moving somewhere else, like trying new cities and stuff, but always somewhere that's very nature esque and like walkable, having more dogs. And career wise, I would say probably doing the same thing, just like working smarter not harder so like maybe having people help but I'm such a perfectionist and a control freak that I never want to like push work onto other people but I feel like mm -hmm. to grow like you kind of have to yeah. so hopefully eventually I'll be more comfortable with that mm. I know you talked a little bit about it before about you know you have to be on your phone all the time for work and scrolling through social media how do you maintain balance when it's literally your job to be you know like chronically online I have learned that I have a boundary with social media where I'm not going to post something or do something if I'm not already doing it. Like if it doesn't make sense for me, I 
don't want to put myself out there and try and do it because even if I watch a fashion TikTok that's like so cool and like out and about and it's outfits or something like that, I can just like it as a viewer. It doesn't mean I have to go recreate it because it just isn't mm-hmm. me. It's not my lifestyle. So like even just Instagram stories and things, reels, things like that. I just try to share what I'm actually doing and that's going to be different for everybody. I just happen to be like the lifestyle niche, but I've just tried to let it flow easily and then it doesn't take like so much power out of me I love that I'm going to implement that and write that on a (laughs) (laughs) post-it but also like how's your 75 soft going I love keeping up with your videos too so I'd love to hear about it thank Thank you you. it's good because I knew from the beginning like I wasn't going to be extremely strict with it it wasn't about that it's just like something to be there to remind me literally like I keep saying oh I'm doing the 75 soft and the second I say that I'm like oh I have to go like read today and so it's literally just to help me there's been days where I didn't do the reading and like something else I feel like I I think I skipped a walk one day or something so for me I'm not like starting it over but it's been really nice just having something to hold me more accountable yeah I like I, I, I really like yeah like having something that you're that like you're trying to like make yourself better like one percent you know like every day yeah and again like I was telling uh Caitlin Lauren like I was watching this video and basically it was talking about how people you know feel lost and if they don't don't feel like they're motivated to know what they're doing then they should um you know ultimately try to do something that's hard and stick with it and it was just it reminded me exactly of Caitlin how you were talking about like you know not feeling like on the same you know level as everyone saying they're super excited for this next year. And I was just like, oh my God, like that's such a coincidence that she decided to do that. Like that's like the best thing she could have decided to do for herself. Yeah, that was um, funny. Yeah, but that's really cool. So just wanted to say that real quick. Thank you. The alignment. And I feel, like, <laughs> I feel like too, a lot of people are doing some sort of challenge right now, but I feel like if anybody is listening, the one tip that I would give is to only do challenges that are geared towards your life. Because I feel like mm-hmm. some challenges are just so extreme for me that I'm like, I couldn't do it. But right. someone else might be able to, so it's totally fine. It's just like find something that works with you in your life. For sure, for sure. For me, I'm just doing sober January. I'm honestly stressed out this month, so I feel like that's enough. <laughs> Valid. And yeah. <laughs> where do you find inspiration for your videos and for your programs? And what's next for you? I find inspiration through YouTube. I've always been a YouTube watcher, so I feel like just my peers, what's trending, I guess, and then in my own personal life, just like what's working in my real life I want to share out on social media so I guess through that and then what I'm working on there's really I just launched the guide so that's hopefully in 2024 going to be my main focus of just doing more guides and just helping anybody who's getting started in the gym thank you (laughs) nice yeah do you have any advice for younger people who are looking into you know pursuing social media and just as we're growing up I'd say if you have the want to do it, then just do it because there's no point in waiting. I feel like I have some friends who have said it and then they like, will say it again in a year. And I'm like, oh, you should like totally start because it's something you've been wanting to do. Like there's no, it's mm-hmm. free to start. So start. Yeah. Why do you think ultimately people don't? Is it the fear? Yeah, I think it's like the fear of cringe. That's probably the number one thing I would say. Yeah. I, I get a lot of my inspiration from TikTok. I like bookmark. I'm like so OCD. I bookmark all my TikToks and like have them like either in motivation, like poetry, art, or oh, like I do that too. Business. That's why we're friends. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> and anyways, like there's in my motivation folder, there's a TikTok that I always go back to. And it's like, it's just like a diagram of like a roulette table and like the ball spitting on it. And they're like, if you were able to constantly spin this roulette table, unlimited amount of times for free and if it hits like you win you know this x amount like would you keep spinning it and obviously the answer is yes and he's basically using that as like a metaphor for social media like cost you no money you never know when it's gonna hit and when it does like you could win big so that's just something i like go back to when i feel like i'm not motivated or something like that so yeah i like that but all right we actually went through pretty quick so we're coming up to the wrap up and so I just have a couple questions I like to ask, you know, our guest speakers on here because I think these are my favorite questions. Mm-hmm. Um, but firstly, the first out of two questions is what is something that, you know, you struggle with or have struggled with that a lot of people don't know about or or don't see? I feel like maybe I've said negative self-talk, but I feel like people just kind of hear that and they're like, oh, like maybe they don't know what that is. But I feel like 
because it's all internal people don't get to see that part but it is hard not even just doing social media but just in your own life like judging yourself or like not even just like look wise either it's like when you hang out with people and then you leave and you're like oh that was so stupid or like oh I tried to make a joke it wasn't funny it's like just, <laughs> I do like, that all I the time that. <laughs> yeah, it's like, it, and it's a lot of people do it, but I feel like we don't talk about the specific things we're saying to ourselves. So it just mm-hmm. feels very isolating and it's embarrassing too, to be like, Oh, like, yeah. Do you go home and like, hate what you say to each other? So it's something that, yeah, I feel like I struggle with a lot. Got you. That's great. Yeah. And I, I totally agree. I, I feel like, you know, cause you know, obviously you do look like you're doing great all the time and a lot of people look up to you and want to be like you. And I think it's funny because my my friend David, he's like the same way. He really inspires me. I look up to him and he really opened my eyes up to like duck syndrome where basically, you know, like above surface, the duck is like calm and, you know, moving quickly, but under the water, it's paddling like crazy trying to get to, you know, where it needs to be. And a lot of people that look like they have it all together are just better at acting like it than others. Yeah. And that's just something people need to to like think about. I yeah, think. that's so 1000 bajillion percent true. <laughs> like I know. I think we're gonna make our mascot a duck just because like yes. um we we're like our like little like acronym is waddle. So we're like, let's just call it like maybe have a duck or something. I love that. I like all of your like metaphors. You you're like, oh I saw this one pinwheel. <laughs> like, I just like that. <laughs> Dude, I have like a, a full, it's always been with me. I don't know. I don't know what it was, but I have, I have a, a note sheet that I've been updating since I was like 14. And whenever I hear a quote, I like put it in my notes. I love um, that. I want to do yeah, that. Yeah. And I sent it over to, uh, to Ben and uh, Mueller because he was like, tell me a bunch of quotes. And I was just like, yes, yes. Like get fired up. I love it. And I, I just sent him all my quotes. I was like, you know, save this, like start adding to him. Like you'll love it. And then he was just like happy about it. So, That's so sad. um, but yeah. Okay. Moving over to the last question. Again, you know, people always seem like really perfect, but do you feel lost currently how you are? Do you know where you're going or you know, is it always something that you're trying to figure out? I do feel like there's always a little bit of an element of loss because some weeks we feel really good and then some weeks we don't. So it's like, oh God, am I going to wake up tomorrow and feel like crap? But yeah. I mean, even a week ago before starting the new year, I had that pit in my stomach. So I was just like, what do I want to focus on this year? And then this year, just like literally journaling, working on myself, spending time at the gym, going on walks. Like I, I feel really good right now. So Mm -hmm. yes, I feel a little lost sometimes, but at the same time, I feel like I'm okay with that. So because I'm okay with being lost every week and being able to pivot and stuff, I, I do feel like I'm at a good place now. That's good. That's good to hear. Well, me and Lauren, just again, thank you so much. We know you're super busy. Obviously, we heard about your day in the beginning, so we appreciate no. you <laughs> carving out some time for us. No, thank um, you. But again, yeah, thank you so much, and we really appreciate it, and, and you're awesome. No, thank you. I'm so honored that you guys wanted to have me on. I can't wait of to course. listen to all your episodes. Oh, my gosh. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you.